Our task now is to query the three neighboring cells for their 2D offsets. And the way we do this is to get the random 2D vector generation section and duplicate it. Then we'll get our 2D integer cell coordinates, drag out a pin, and have the end of that create an add node. Hold the 2 key and click to create a 2D constant node, and we will connect that into the add node. The value we want to add to the integer cell coordinates is going to be minus 1 in the g or v direction. This is the same as subtracting 1. The reason to specifically do it this way is that we're making it clear that we are accessing the cell in the negative direction and changing the sign of the offset and just switching from add to subtract gives us the same result. This is how we shift the current cell coordinates up to the previous cell so that we can use it as the seed to effectively get that cell's random offset. And remember that the Unreal Engine UVs start from the top left corner and increase as they go to the bottom left, as it's easy to forget that and get confused as to which direction the cells are being offsetted. So we can plug that into the 2D generator inputs. And if we preview that, we should get the 2D offsets for the cell above. Then to get the final offset UVs, we have to again subtract from the original 0 to 1 repeating cells. But this time, we'll do the extra offset like we did with the integer coordinates, so that we're starting from that neighbor's cell's UVs. Create a subtract node, and the original 0 to 1 UVs go into the A slot, and the whole integer 2D offsets from the new 2D constant node go into the B slot. This is a bit odd, as we're subtracting a negative number, which itself becomes adding 1 in that direction. What this is doing is making the current UVs shift over to the cell on the positive side because we want to pretend that we are 1 over from the neighbor's cell in the positive direction. This is because we want the values on the negative side to be in the 0 to 1 space so that when we apply the random offset, the result falls within the original 0 to 1 range and the clamp sampling mode clips the texture correctly. This way, we only get the part of the texture that actually falls within this cell. Let's apply that random offset to the shifted original UV. Create a subtract node and plug the new neighbor offsetted UVs and apply the neighbor's 2D random value. These new UVs are now the same as that neighbor's UV with the difference that it's being done in the current cell. Now we need to do a whole new texture sample. We can duplicate the existing sample node and bring it down to the next section, and we'll plug in our new UVs. Then we need to combine it with the previous sample. And we can do some simple compositing by using another interpolate node. So duplicate that one, take the previous one's output, and plug it into the first input of the new lerp. And we're going to plug the new neighbor sample into the B slot, and use the alpha of the new sample to blend between the two. If we plug these composited samples into our material, we can now see the final effects start to take shape. We can see that instead of there only being one splat per cell, we now have two, and they line up exactly with the top neighbor. There are some artifacts we can see where the cells are lining up, and the preview window can even glitch out sometimes depending on the zoom level we're currently at. There's a couple of reasons for that, and we're going to address them soon, but for now we'll just get the overall effect finished, and then do the cleanup steps needed to make the cell transition smooth. Let's do the other two cells. The great thing is that we don't have to do too much here. We could take this whole section and duplicate it with Control C and Control V, and then modify just the initial cell offset. But there's also an opportunity here to use a material function to wrap up this functionality and make the main material a bit cleaner.